Jim from Verizon. You want to start? Sure. And also, please introduce Jim okay. uh, McGrail. Uh, my name is Peter Bowman, Vice President of External Affairs for Verizon in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And along with me is uh, Jim McGrail from uh, Telecommunications Insight Group. Um, if I could just make some brief opening sure. comments, Mr. Chairman. Um, Verizon Communications is a $90 billion dollar, dollar 30 uh, company. We have a long history of delivering broadband and other wireline and wireless communication services um, and innovations to our customers. We're financially sound. We've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in, into supporting this business to guarantee its success. Our advanced fiber optic network, which offers video and data, data connections directly to the customer premise, is the most sophisticated in the nation. We're supported locally by a highly trained technician, monitored our networks, monitored 24 by 7 for reliability and quality. We have the ability and capacity to troubleshoot issues long before they affect the customer. Hundreds of customer service representatives are located right here in Massachusetts and Andover, Mass, that will be serving this marketplace with highly trained technicians um, ready to install service. Um, on behalf of Verizon, I want to stress uh, our appreciation for the time and effort that the town manager and others have taken to, to work with us to negotiate this agreement. I assure you that if a license is granted tonight, that Verizon will soon provide outstanding alternative uh, video services to um, your residents like we're doing in 24 communities, as a matter of fact, right down the street here uh, in the Hunt. We invested billions of dollars in this network. Um, we've spent uh, over half a billion dollars in building out our infrastructure in Massachusetts alone. We're in the process of investing millions of dollars right here in Swampskit. We have over 14,000 highly trained employees right here in Massachusetts. We're pleased to say that over 40 of your residents are in fact employees of Verizon. Um, our packages will have more content, over 300 digital uh, channels, the growing number of uh, 2,500 on demand uh, titles, more high definition uh, offerings. For a better quality, all digital network, um, simple uh, simple plans as low as uh, less than $13 a month, and expanded plans for less than $40 a month. Again, I, I commend you, uh, your desire to bring video competition to your community. Um, and once again, if, if approved tonight, uh, like I said, we, we begin the process of offering our video uh, to some of your residents uh, very shortly. And at this point, I could turn it over to Jim McGrail for some additional opening comments, and then we'll both be uh, here to answer any questions. Great. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, excuse me, Peter. Excuse Thank me. you. Jim, the uh, floor is yours. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Bogus said, my name is Jim McGrail. I'm from the Telecommunications Insight Group. Uh, you think he, he can be heard okay? I'm just wondering. Do you want to stand up? Or? <coughs> I think you should just shout. Shout. <laughs> been the first time. We're um, expecting new equipment any day, but until that comes, please speak up. We're, we're trying to help. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Selectmen, I would first like to begin by thanking you for the opportunity to appear here tonight to discuss any issues or questions the Board of Selectmen may have and the public may have as it relates to the qualifications of Verizon New England to provide cable television services in the town of Swamp School. As you know, Mr. Chairman, representatives of Verizon New England first met with the town of Swampscott in June of 2005. The purpose of that meeting was to discuss Verizon New England's interest in obtaining a cable license in the town. Since that time, a number of steps have been taken and milestones reached relative to the franchise application before you. I would like at this time to summarize the chronology of events that have occurred since that June meeting and introduce to the record all the applicable documents. On June 7, 2005, Verizon met representatives met with representatives of Swamp Scott to discuss Verizon's interest in obtaining a cable license. On July 15, 2005, the town sent letters to the cable division requesting waivers of certain unnecessary regulatory requirements and giving notice of the town's initiation of the cable licensing process. On July 19, 2005, the cable division granted the town's waiver requests. On December 8th and December 10th, 2005, the town solicited for cable license applications by placing legal notices in the win item. On February 9, 2006, Verizon submitted the cable television uh, license application to the community. On July 20, 2006, the town issued an issuing authority report setting forth its cable-related community needs. On July 28, 2006, Verizon responded to the issuing authority report and submitted a proposed cable license. Between that time and the month of November, Verizon and the town met multiple times to negotiate the terms of a cable license and exchange multiple drafts of license agreements uh, during that time. On October 26th and October 30th, 
the town posted a public notice in the Lynn item for a November 20th public hearing to be held here tonight by the first Select. Mr. Chairman, it should be noted at all times for the record during negotiations with the town, the members of the town's negotiating team were very quick to remind us of the level playing field language in the incumbent agreement. The negotiation team told us from the beginning that when taken as a whole, in light of all relevant circumstances, the town would not grant the license to Verizon that was more favorable or less burdensome than the incumbent agreement. Verizon only went with respect of the town's wishes throughout the negotiations and believes that the town has satisfied its normal playing field obligations with the proposed license that is before you this evening. And Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you and the members of the Board of Selectmen for the opportunity you are giving Verizon this evening. We have been very careful to ensure the agreement we have negotiated allows us to meet the capable needs of the town's sponsor. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Um, Chairman, I'm going to ask people in the audience to ask first, and then we can uh, ask. So uh, may I ask anyone in the audience uh, regarding this license, uh, would you, anyone want to speak in against this Verizon license application, please? OK. Then I assume everybody else is in favor of this license. There is some. <laughs> um, okay. Well, any people in the audience, <coughs> excuse me, like to speak in favor of uh, just a few since it's not, no one's against it. Uh, anyone at all would like to say anything about it? Uh, Herb Dawkins, Precinct heard, 6. Come on in just a little, Herb, so we can hear you a little better, please. Uh, Herb Dawkins, Precinct 6. My way of thinking, this comes as close to a municipal no-brainer as you can get. <laughs> Uh, we're talking about moving from <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll twist it up for a while. We'll <laughs> right. The question is whether we move from a monopoly to a duopoly. And we're not only talking about a question here of price and cost. Probably what will be even more important than there in the distant future is the download speed. Here we're talking about megabytes per second. And Verizon, I believe, does have the optical fiber network that will allow for ever-increasing amounts of download speed, which becomes increasingly important. Um, I had the privilege of serving on the technology committee when Comcast came along. Uh, it struck me then, still strikes me now, that they had a monopoly situation here. They were, in, in a real sense, almost unanswerable as to what they provided. Now, for the first time, we have an opportunity to do something about it. Verizon is something that we should and I hope it will be installed so the citizens who want to will be able to avail it. Again, I consider it to be a no-brainer. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Bell. Anyone else? Take a couple. Yes. Gentlemen in the back, please. Just please stand and identify yourself. Hi, my name is Ed Robinson. I'm a resident of Swanscott and I'm a graduate of Swanscott High School in 1978. I'd like to speak in, in favor of having public access TV with Verizon. Um, every town in the area, Every town but Swampscott, Sabre, Peabody, Beverly, Beverly, Linfield, and Marblehead has public access television. It's standard operating procedure in these towns. Some have set up nonprofit organizations to run them, some have. It's not required to do that. All make equipment and training available to their residents. Swampscott is the only town that does not provide this valuable service. In case people don't know, public access means anyone can submit and create their own data. Having no public access television means religious groups, like churches, and synagogues are shut off from communicating with Swanscott residents over the cable system. Nonprofit groups are also blocked. Individuals who want to take a CYO basketball game or a Pop Warner game and share it over the cable system cannot do so. In fact, with the current selection policy, the majority of the town is blocked from communicating with each other over the cable system. Linfield has a smaller population and fewer Comcast subscribers in Swampscott. If they have educational, government, and public access with Verizon, <coughs> why can't Swampscott? Who can possibly be against it, and for what reason? Because I felt so strongly about this issue, I uh, gathered some signatures on a petition that I'd like to read. We, the underside, uh, around 100, over 100 people signed this petition. Swampscott right we, the underside, undersigned residents of the town of Swampscott, Massachusetts, strongly urge the Board of Selectmen of the town of Swampscott to institute and support public access cable television for the residents of the town in order to strengthen and make more meaningful their citizens' rights for freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Robinson. I, I just, um, I don't want to get into a discussion of public access because that's not the reason why we're here tonight. But, um, I mean, I've never spoken with you, I don't think anyone else has, regarding our uh, stance on um, uh, local access. Um, quite frankly, I, I think you're incorrect in your assumption, and that's certainly something that we can discuss at a later time. Um, I think one of the things that uh, we have said, that I have said especially, and the board has agreed with me that, um, and I've kind of been asked uh, Mr. Mailer for a while to get Channel 16 up and running, just so we can show the selectmen's meetings and uh, just so we can have the, um, uh, the screen going to let people know what's going on. Um, you know, I'm sure if you've watched Channel 16, it's not very, um, you know, professional. It's the equipment's old and we're getting it replaced very, very shortly. So that, that at very least, uh, we can get that up and running and get that going uh, and then look into, you know, we'll set up, I assume, at some point a cable, a cable advisory committee and look into uh, setting up local access. It's going to take a full-time person to do it. We want, you know, anything like that, you certainly want to do right. And I think um, anybody uh, on this board and with any common sense is in favor of increasing information out to people. So, um, you know, thank you for your comments. I'm glad you brought it up, and I would like to talk to you about it someday. And, uh, uh, but just so, uh, in case anybody is watching Channel 16 and it's working, uh, that certainly is not our policy, like you had stated. So I respectfully disagree. All right, I'd like to move on to someone else that's in favor of... Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you disagree with. Well, I'm disagreeing with your assumption that we're not in favor of local access. Well, I continue to, um, to play on Channel 16 and refuse to play. I did? Uh, town views. Well, who's the town? Did any of us? Well, let me I mean, I don't want to get into an argument with you. I'd like to, I'd like to discuss it, but this is not the forum. Okay. If I can wait one final yeah, Mr. Mayor, the discussion. Uh, we, we do not have local access today, and that's why the tape was, was not played. We don't. And there's no confusion about that. Uh, I, going with the chairman's comments, that doesn't mean you can't have local access, and it doesn't mean that, uh, that in several uh, public meetings, selectmen's meetings, we haven't identified opportunities to expand programming, which, although I, I can't speak to the board, I think there was general endorsement about expanding programming. Um, how we do that, the method by which it happens, whether that's uh, bringing back a kit that hasn't existed in the town for some time, I think that certainly needs further exploration and study. The reason that it is in play today is we, we just don't have local access, we have government access. So there needs to be a philosophical change, which is to your point. And I think to the chairman's point, um, no one's closed the door to that. It just needs further discussion and, and really to understand what's required and um, what programming you want to allow, if, if it's just local access in a pure sense or any other additional programming, and find a methodology to make sure that it happens because some of it is about what's available, what studios are available, what resources for programming are available, who's going to put on, on those programs and so forth. So I, th I think the board has shown certainly an openness to have a discussion um, at, a, at a deeper level, and I think uh, I would encourage the board to do that, by the way. But in that absence, so there's no confusion, there isn't local access in Swansea today. And, and I think that's your point. I mean, it just isn't. So. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, anybody else? Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jim Smith. I live up the 22 Phyllis Beach Avenue in Sponsor. I've communicated by mail, so I don't want to repeat those comments. I just want to say that it's, I'm with Mr. Buckman on the status of this in terms of being, being a no-brainer status. Uh, what I'd like to ask you to do is do as quickly as possible. Maybe even, I don't know what your rules are off of, Mr. Chairman, if you vote on it tonight, so this process can begin so that we can get this competition into town. And uh, those of us who would like to switch from our current uh, carrier have an opportunity to do so as soon as possible. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Smith. Appreciate your comments. Hi. Yes, sir. John Mensledge, uh, resident of Swamp Scott, Mud Street, also a employee of Verizon. I helped in the initial rollout um, of BIOS TV in the Woolman area, and I, and I want to thank you for your work to get this to our area because I've seen it work, and I've seen um, especially the high definition, the quality. I think everyone's going to, it's an exciting product, and I look forward to ordering it. Thank you. Appreciate it. A couple more? Yes, sir. Hi, Mr. Chairman. My name is uh, John Kiley. I live on Greenwood Terrace. I'm here as a user, and uh, I subscribe to Comcast Cable, Internet, and Telephone. And maybe many of you here do, but uh, let me just tell you one thing. I got a very interesting phone call on Saturday, and it was from my, Comca my Comcast rep. Now, any of you that have all three bundled services know it's quite expensive. 
for no apparent reason, they want to lower my bill by $75 a month, all of a sudden. <laughs> I find that amazing. Um, and I also think it's because competition's coming, and that can only mean reduced costs for everyone. And as a user, $75 a month is a lot of money, particularly if you have a father of two children. Now, I'm not saying I'm happy. I'm unhappy with my service. I'm really not, but I know of nothing else. I don't know of anything else that's out there. So I think this is a great opportunity for the town to impact people on something they use every day, and that's their computer and their television. I know I certainly use both of my fair share, but as a user, competition is a good thing. I come from a town, I've only been here 10 years, I'm sorry, who <laughs> had competition, that Rookie. was summer. It was the first town that had competition. And my mother still lives there, and she still calls me every time. They're still going back and forth. She switches back and forth all the time, each time the rates get up. It's a great thing for users, and I can't can encourage the town strongly enough to undertake this endeavor. Thanks, John. I appreciate your comments. Mr. Mr. Chen, if I can, there was a resident who contacted me that I didn't get into your packages, and I feel obligated to speak on that person's behalf. Resident of 45 Lincoln Circle, with some specific questions to Verizon, I think would be helpful for everyone in the room. Uh, what is the expected role of, let's, let's make a presumption that the board acts favorably on the license request this evening. Um, some communication to the town about uh, what's going to be rolled out, where it's going to be rolled out, the timing of the rollout. Uh, there are sections in Swampscope today that don't have DSL service, which in this day and age is just shocking, quite frankly. I'll call it DSL service, but high-speed internet service. Uh, what does it mean for those sections of town? If, I think if you can speak a little bit about the rollout, it would be very helpful for everybody. Sure. Um, we expect to serve, uh, I think, to make the license to serve the entire town. Um, our uh, build-out is broken down into three separate areas. First is aerial. If you have telephone walls in front of your house that have aerial wires, um, you know, we would serve you in that manner. That uh, area, 82% of the community is served aerially. And we expect that we will be able to serve 82 So therefore, we expect that we will be able to serve 82% of the people um, within <coughs> the first year of the license. Um, the second component. You, can you guys hear that back there? OK. 80, with the, and I, I don't want to stop. Oh, that's right. 80, 82% of the community is served aerially through telephone poles. And there's an expectation that all of those folks that are served in that way would have service available within the first 12 months of the license signed. Is that fair? That's fair. Um, we have 8% of the people are served uh, via underground uh, buried um, wires, uh, buried fiber. There's two components to that. Uh, years ago, telephone companies would uh, dig a hole in the ground um, and just throw their copper wires in the ground. Uh, with the fiber product, obviously, in this day and age, we're not going to just dig a you know, dirt hole and then throw some fiber in there. If there's a conduit system that exists and there's enough room in the conduit system, we would just pull the existing fiber, uh, we would pull the fiber through the existing conduit system. If, in fact, there isn't a conduit system in place or, or there isn't enough room in the existing conduit system, we will come to the town for the necessary um, permits to um, uh, build out a, a conduit system. And again, that represents a uh, uh, eight percent of uh, community. The remaining ten percent of the community is served via multiple dwelling units. Anything above a three-family home, um, uh, you know, an apartment building, a housing authority, senior housing, or something of the sort. In those particular instances, uh, we need to um, uh, not only get a license from the uh, community, from the board to provide services, but we also need a right of entry agreements from these uh, respective uh, property owners to gain access. Um, to their property. The, the difference between our product and anybody else's on the market is that we're bringing a direct fiber node to everybody's home. So if you do live in an apartment building this, uh, and you subscribe to us, we would bring, uh, and if, just for the sake of argument, say with a 50 unit complex, we would bring 50, and if all 50 people wanted it, we would be 50 separate nodes right to the people's um, property. So, um, you know, our product it is a good product, and I think that, you know, because of um, the uniqueness of it, um, so when do you think the 10 and the 8 would expect to see service? We have, um, un under the state statute, we have up to six years to provide service to everyone in the license um, that we negotiated with the town. We committed to providing um, service to a significant amount of subscribers within uh, 12 months, and that would certainly represent at least the 82% um, of the people. And then we can, we've committed 
um, to reducing that six-year requirement to five years. Um, so ultimately, our obligation in licenses to get to everybody in the town within five years. Now, that being said, I, I think that obviously it's in Verizon's best interest to get to the people as quickly as it possibly can. So in light of the fact that we'll be able to reach 82% of the people very quickly, I think that what we typically do is once we get a franchise and we feel we can get a return on our investment, we start dedicating um, uh, representatives to start negotiating the right of entry agreements and we start directing um, resources um, to, to begin the um, underground work. But in Massachusetts, obviously, you know, the cities and towns all have the requirement that you can't really do any buried work between November 15th and April 15th unless, you know, the weather abides. So if we can get in here beforehand and the town allows us to do so, we will. If not, you can be rest assured that on April 16th uh, they'll be doing the work to get to people as well. Thanks. Two more follow-up. Is it fair to say that the infrastructure on those at 82 percent is substantially improved? Yes. And the other thing I'd just like to bring out is the fact you mentioned DSL. I mean, this is a brand new fiber network coming out of the Lynn Wire Center, which serves Swampskin. So it is, as Jim highlighted, but I just want to stress this, it is fiber to the prem. So it is a brand new network that we bring right to the prem. So uh, streets or areas that previously could not get DSL because DSL does have a distance limitation um, in it, um, that, that's not an issue here. This doesn't, it's not distance sensitive when we are building out through the entire community. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Reed, I want to acknowledge you. Uh, sure. our, uh, Tom Reed from the high school, he runs our TV uh, part from, does yeah. an excellent job with the Thank young you men and women who's doing our tonight uh, right. production. Brian tonight. Dennehy. Hi, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, thank the board and certainly thank uh, Andrew for all the work you've done to bring this competition in. I agree with everyone else. Um, anything that gives people another way to get local cable to see what the great things that my kids do instead of getting direct TV is fine with me. Um, I did want to ask, since we're on the question of timetables, as you know, we're going to be building a new school and moving into a new school. About when would you expect that our local educational channel, in addition to being carried for Comcast subscribers, could be carried for Verizon subscribers? Uh, we committed, um, Andrew brought that point up during the course of negotiations, and we committed that once you, you know, give us access um, to that facility, that new facility will be able to provide service within 120 days of being that access. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank you for all you do for the students in the town. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, motion to uh, close the public hearing if there's nothing else. So, Second, please. Yeah. Okay. Then, um, okay, I'll go around the table. Anyone else? Mr. Cassie, would you like to? Or? We can close the public hearing. Yeah. Then we can, so I, right. I made a motion to close it. Okay. We, uh, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, my question was, I think, the same thing as Jill's at first was, I, I know I'm in an area where uh, we don't have access to any of the Verizon products as of yet, and I'd like to get there as quickly as possible. Um, and I am very happy to see competition come to town, and uh, look forward to having you here. Thank you, Mr. Cassie. Mr. Foreman, any questions or comments? Really, I had the same issue about sort of about the timing. I would just point out, although it sounds like you're on top of this anyway, the 12 month period is for you to install for businesses, not for uh, residents. And it's up to five years for residents in this agreement. Mm -hmm. No, the, the 12 month period is says, relative to residents, it says, says we, um, we shall provide services. So those numbers, that 12 to five years relates to residences. With regard to the business community, it says we may, but we intend to serve all. But the resident, that's our, our first priority here in the town of Swampscott is to the residents. Right. Well, it's good to hear the, the schedule. Um, I had a question actually from Mr. Mailer. The um, time frame for this is 15 years. Was that the same for? Um, <coughs> no, as, okay. as a new licensee, uh, they're, they're allowed to request 15 years if I think uh, both what I've looked at in terms of other community models and the compelling argument that they begin day one with no, effectively no customer base uh, is the reason why under uh, the regulations are a lot of 15 year license and, and um, I think they've, they've advocated successfully that it benefits us from an economic uh, financial perspective in the contract to, to support the 15 year license. The, and just one final question. In the opening statements, <clears throat> the observation was made that the town wanted a level playing field and 
uh, and wanted both the, the, the economic terms to be the same for Verizon as for Comcast. And uh, is it your opinion that that's exactly what's been accomplished if we vote for this? Uh, the short answer is yes. The, the slightly longer answer is that it's actually language within the Comcast agreement that there needs to be level playing field. So it's not only a town's uh, desire, but it's also contractually obligated. So I, I absolutely feel that this is uh, level playing field language. Of course, it has slight differences, the length of the contract. Excuse me, a license in 15 years is a lot. There's reasons for that. Uh, the economic capital investment into the community is the same as the Comcast agreement, rolled out slightly differently, but the same. Um, the franchise fee is exactly the same. So it's much about the agreement that, in fact, um, is, is very much specific. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Mr. Sandel. I just have a couple questions. I remember 10 years ago, we actually begged for competition as far as cable, the cable system. I believe it was then Warner Cable, and the only taker, the only other firm that was interested was RCN, and I think that they eventually went bankrupt or whatever, but they didn't see it uh, feasible. But I think right now we have a winner with Verizon. And I just have a couple questions regarding the program. When you said you will offer the HD stations like Com Comcast, will it be the same number or the same type of programs? Like if somebody's concerned, you know, the Nessons of the world that come in HD, and you know, well, you can offer the, those type of program, those yeah, programs? Absolutely. And because of the nature of our network, where it is fiber to the prem, it's really unlimited. So we have capacity. So it's our view that we'll have more high definition and more robust uh, programming because of the capacity. It is not limited in any way because it's fiber to the prem, where other infrastructures have been fiber to a node, and that goes from the node to the home or to the prem and coax. So sometimes there is a capacity limitation in other networks. This network there's no limitation whatsoever, so we do think our program will be very robust and, and highly competitive. As far as the boxes, the, uh, the HD boxes or yes. the regular boxes, will we be able to buy those or do we continue to have to lease that on top of our cable bill, paying the lease? I mean, it's $14, $15 for the HD box, and I think if you add that on your cable bill, you're starting to talk, you know, r really running up there. Is there an opportunity to possibly buy those? I mean, our current plan is, is that we rent the, or lease the boxes uh, to, uh, to customers, but I think as the business rolls out and the beauty of having multiple competitors and with, you know, companies such as Comcast and Verizon competing in the community that what the marketplace demands, there'll be now more opportunity to do things such as that. So uh, currently it is our intention to lease those boxes, but that's as we roll it out today. And I know we right. Yeah. That that's the end. And um, I just, you know, looking very much forward to this, um, and I know that this isn't related, but and you don't have to, you know, I don't expect any answers, but if you could get a Verizon representative to come talk to this board about improving the ser cell service in Swamp Scott, it's always falling upon deaf ears. They don't want, it doesn't seem like they want to put a cell tower in. You need Kevin to understand that he, he actually asked you a few other questions before he asked that one. Yeah. <laughs> dating is remarkable so. constraint. No. I, I can actually, I mean, we do work very closely, and it's not a direct, uh, but I work very closely with our wireless engineers, and I'd be more than happy to take that back and figure out what the issues are. Because it hasn't improved in five or six years now. The Humphrey Street area is virtually a dead area, and um, people down towards Phillips Beach can't get cell service in their homes or use the Verizon wireless access cards. So, again, we're here tonight for cable, but I would appreciate if you could send a representative here to address that, that particular problem. Absolutely. I'll no work back for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Mr. Baker, anything else you want to um, Just a couple of uh, questions. One is, um, five years is sort of the 15-year contract. Five years is the time frame for the initial rollout at, at the longest level. Um, where, where do you think the whole technology is going to go vis-a-vis -vis, um, uh, cable versus wireless versus other forms of distribution? And are you expecting and anticipating that this is going to be a cable-based game for a very long time or not? I mean, we do anticipate that. I mean, I think what we've done as a company is we've, we've taken it at a couple of different angles. I mean, one is we're clearly building out fiber of the premises, as we call it, to say, because basically the copper infrastructure does no longer um, serve the needs of the, the, the general population. It doesn't allow you to put voice data and video all in one network. So that's our strategy on the landline side of the business is to build out this broadband network. And we 
don't basically back to, to, to the art question also, as we view this as the beginning, we're built out the network, we're rolling out video, we're getting licenses, but then we feel that there'll be more and more applications, more and more speed can be put on this network. So we view that, that that's one element of our overall strategy. And clearly the other element of it is we push from the other end, and that's the wireless end of things, where it's no longer just a voice platform, it's also a data platform, and it's also a, a video platform. So we see really just trying to get customers from, from all angles and provide the service and meet the needs of, of consumers. And we do view that this is a long-term uh, commitment, and as, as Mr. Mailer said, we made a 15 year commitment to the And we see that cable services, yes, will continue to be a land-based um, okay. You know, for the future. Um, five years is a really long time. Um, and for a lot of people, 12 months is going to feel like a really long time. Um, I don't think it would be a bad idea if either quarterly or semi-annually, you know, you just put this on the agenda and we talked about where we are. Um, I think the, if we have some regularly scheduled point, you know, whether it's in February or May um, or August or November, Actually, I think February, May, August, November would be good. Um, I think we should have some regularly scheduled, uh, anticipated update on sort of where we are and what's going on so that you know that we're going to expect to hear quarterly or semi-annually where we are in this stuff. The town's going to hear it, and you can incorporate it in the schedule and we can expect it. Um, I think it would be a drag if it took five years to get the whole town done, to tell you the truth. Um, if I can make two comments on that, I think as you know, Mr. Baker, I'm locally based here, work in, in Boston, so I'm more than happy to come out, you know, to the to the board regular updates. We also assign a service manager, you know, to each community that's co-located with me in Boston that would be monitoring this on uh, on, our, on a regular uh, basis to ensure that services are rolled out. And as Mr. McGrail said, it is not our intention to take five years to get this all built out. Uh, it is our intention to roll this out as quickly as, as, as possible so that we can get customers. It goes back to your point, your initial question um, about do we see the, you know, this as being the future? Yes, we do, but we need to make our future profitable on the, these types of networks. So it's clearly we do not have a customer on our video platform today here in the town of Swamps. So we need to get customers, and we need to roll this network out more aggressively. Um, so it uh, would be our intention to do it sooner rather. Okay. Yeah. Two things to that. One is that, uh, there are three things. One is it's even just a written summary of the amount of new accounts added on some kind of regular basis. In the first year of roll it would, would be helpful to the board to understand that. Two, a, a mechanism of funding being the franchise fee is contingent upon gross revenues. Those gross, those gross revenues are generated off users paying uh, monthly service charges for the service they provide. So we see that in the form of reporting. Um, and then finally, the commitment of, um, of the uh, capital investment, what I call capital investment in the community, of the 225000 125000 is seen within 60 days of the approval of the yeah. license, may very well arrive before the, the first Verizon Bios customer up, yeah. uh, rolls out in Swampscott. So it shows um, your interest, the link to our interest, is to, in order to try to get that money back in your own way through investment or return on your capital investment. You need customers, so there's clearly a link. So, well said. Thank, thank you, Mr. <coughs> Excuse me, Peter. Just a quick question. I've been asked this. Uh, I, I do a lot of work with our seniors in town. Just wondering if there's any special provisions for any discounts or anything for them in the behalf. We don't. There's nothing specifically in our license relative to senior discounts. We don't. Uh, for, we have 27 licenses in Massachusetts to date. We have over 200 nationwide. Um, there are no senior discounts in there. Uh, from a legal's perspective, Verizon sees discounts as a um, as a form of rate regulation that with effect of competition. They just don't want to go down that path. However, obviously, as a second as an entry into the marketplace, a second entry into the marketplace, someone that needs to attract you know customers, young and old. You know, we're going to have to come into this community, and if the marketplace dictates that a discount is necessary, well, it warrants it, then we'll have to provide a discount. We just don't want to legal, uh, legally obligate ourselves to do so, but never, never rule it out. Okay, thanks. Again, in the, uh, in the context of parity, uh, Comcast, not surprisingly, has a similar position. And, and um, the right. relationship with Comcast um, post-license was a, effectively a side letter of agreement to afford uh, seniors discounts in Swampscott and we would encourage Verizon to do the same. I think it's also important to note well, one of the people that spoke here tonight had mentioned that he had received a call on Saturday about reducing his bill. 
Typically, when a second entrance comes into the marketplace, you'll see cable rates reduced by as much as 27%. So we've seen in other communities where we've brought licenses to the table, and all of a sudden, <coughs> Comcast has taken their bundled services down from $160 a month to $90 a month, and things like that. So, so we expect that that will continue here on Swamp, because as I've already seen that it's already been done. So I think it's a ultimately competition will result in discounts and negative performance. Okay. I received a call from both companies on Friday night, just so <laughs> one at like six and one at seven. Okay, Peter, uh, thank you. Jim, thank you. Can um, I just ask Peter one thing? Sure. I know this is a little bit over the top, but when you're doing the program, and I, I remember 10 years ago, we, the town wanted the Golf Channel, and we pounded the table for months on that. <laughs> but the end of NFL Sunday ticket, where you can get all 16 games, is very important. Now, Direct TV has a monopoly on that, and I think with these new customers, and we'd be able to make a substantial bid so we could access those 16 games. Yeah, so yeah, it's consistent. <laughs> Keep that in mind, please. Okay, there you go. Mr. Chairman, if I can make a recommendation. Um, yes. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming uh, and discussing this tonight. And Mr. Belkin, thank you for your vote of confidence that this is a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mailer. <laughs> uh, as, as the board knows, I've forwarded you a uh, what I'll identify as a draft license agreement with Verizon. Um, I would like to recommend that the board take favorable action this evening on that license uh, with two caveats, uh, a motion which would include amending section 6.1 Point two, sounds like a zoning bylaw is supposed to say. 6.1.2.1, the first sentence, removing the words non character generated. The remainder of the agreement to remain as provided to the board. And that um, exhibit B, which identifies the town properties in which cable drafts will be provided. Those properties, by the way, are identified in section 5E of the Massachusetts Cable Law were afforded the ability to have cable drops, but that, you know, I satisfactorily complete discussions with Verizon to make sure that we're agreeing to the same buildings, but with, with those two caveats that the board take affirmative action to approve uh, the license as, pro as proposed to Verizon. Just Thank you. We agree with those changes. Okay. Um, do I have any motions on the floor? I'd like to make a motion that we accept uh, the Verizon contract with the amendments made by Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Cassie. Second, please. Thank Mr. St. All in favor, please. Aye. 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 Okay, it passes. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, do you think in the um, future we should definitely deal with that uh, the access, the local access, and how we Absolutely. on that? I think we should, uh, without question. Thank you. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think that was, they just, I was like, this is, this is awesome. I'm yeah. so psyched. Yeah. I'm glad. I think this you is great. I mean, prices are going to collapse. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be awesome. On the local access issue, I, I know I heard Mr. Santanello say this, that we should probably get it on the agenda and talk about it, and I, I agree with that. I think that um, we ought to let people know where we stand on the issue, and um, I think that w what they'll find is that we're not opposed to it. It's just that the devil's in the details, and that there's going to be a cost associated with it, and we're going to have to figure out uh, where that cost is going to come from. But um, I think we ought to have a discussion you about mean it. How we're going to pay for it? Huh? How oh, we're going to pay for yeah, it? Yeah, we're going to yeah, pay for right. it. Um, you can't man it with personnel. Well, that's the cost issue. Yeah. Um, so I think we ought to talk about it, and we ought to uh, exp we ought to get out there what we think the cost would be, and why we don't have the money, even though uh, it looks like this new cable provider is going to give us over time two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. We ought to be able to explain to the town why it is that doesn't mean we have necessarily have money to do um, a full-scale local access channel. So I think that's a great idea, and we ought to do it. Um, and uh, I also think that um, we should have a more broad discussion about public access cable because I, I I can't tell exactly what it is um, that our, our our obstacles are and would love to know.